we're here with the Tesla Roadster Sport on a cold Michigan day. Obviously, we can't take it to the track. Actually, it's even got snow tires on it. But that's the whole point, is the Tesla Roadster kind of car you can live with every day. And that's what we're going to look at. A couple of things that are immediately evident in the Tesla, and one is how quiet it is. You just hear a faint whine of the motor. But the other thing is the immediate power. It's There's no trail off, you're not waiting for any gears, it's only got one speed. So you hit the gas, and you immediately go. And anything that's in this bin over here gets thrown out onto the door sill. When you take your foot off the gas pedal, sorry, the accelerator, it goes into a regenerative mode and takes back some of the energy. It uses the motor basically run in reverse to slow the car down. It's strong enough that you hardly ever use the brakes. So here we are in an electric car parking spot and there's no plug to be found. So uh, what's the point? really. Uh, the Tesla does have about a 200 mile range though, so the idea is you can make it to your electric car parking spot and back to the high voltage charger in your garage at home without having to find an outlet. Uh, which is good because we can't find anything. The Tesla Roadster weighs about 2,800 pounds. Surprisingly, it handles the weight pretty well. The ride is not that bad, even for you know the horrible roads we have in Ann Arbor. One problem is there's no power assist to the steering, so when parking or moving around at low speed, there's a lot of steering effort. So we're not actually out of juice, but if you did find yourself in a pinch, this is probably what you'd be reduced to doing, since there's no charging stations anywhere. Get a big extension cord, try to find a plug. I, I can't. Do you have somewhere I can plug in my electric car? There's a plug back here. There's some plugs right there. So plugging the Tesla in is actually kind of a moot point anyway, because when you're charging on 110, it would take hours to get any usable range. You really want to charge around 220 volt, which, like I said, you're probably going to have in your house. If you have to plug it in to a regular outlet, you probably want to sit it overnight or something, much longer time. So most Tesla owners are going to spend an extra $3,000 and get a home charging station that gets wired by a professional electrician and it can charge the car in as few as four hours. If you don't want to go that route or if you want to charge at your office or someone else's house, you can get the $1,500 mobile charging cord that we have. It comes with a bunch of different connectors, including a high voltage 50 amp charger. That will charge in six hours. But if you think the Tesla is just an overgrown golf cart, it's a perfectly serviceable car, provided you don't have to pick up the kids or you don't have to do any unforeseen errands that would take you beyond your comfort range for your battery level. A regular car still fits more people, it's cheaper, and you can fill up at any gas station.